those songs that Tammy picked out and uh, I, I, I have to say this um, I heard a guy play Feliz Navidad on the guitar um, it was a, a folk regular standard guitar he was all over that guitar and every every key, key every syllable he was playing that and I never heard anything like that before it was the Spanish style all over that and and so that reminded me and I saw Ron look at uh, playing that and I go man he can play that <laughs> so I appreciate that brother Rod Amen. and um, you know sometimes we I'm so thankful let me put it this way I am so thankful Sheila and I were talking about this for this church and for you people, because we have the freedom to worship the Lord. And we're not bound by tra tradition or um, ceremonial or, we, you know, we went to a, a place and concert and, and, and um, beautiful voices. They were the most beautiful voices you've heard. Um, but it wasn't the freedom of the Holy Spirit there and I'm so glad that it's here in this place and you folks can be free to worship the Lord in spirit and in truth amen I appreciate that so much so we appreciate sometimes we take it granted uh, for you folks and and, uh, and I know it's Christmas season so you know we don't have a lot of people here this morning but I tell you what, um, I'm thankful for, for those that will come and worship the Lord in spirit and in truth. Yeah. I just wanted to add to next, next Sunday is Christmas Eve. So let's just all come out for a wonderful, wonderful just church family and time of love and fellowship and worship and just, just being together. It's going to be precious and I just uh, thank the Lord for us. So come down and invite your friends and loved ones and just be one big family and have a wonderful time celebrating yes. 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 Thank you, Lord. yes. So yeah, we're, we're looking forward to it. I mean, just a family. You know, that's what thing. That's what Christmas is all about is family, and we can come together and just worship the Lord. And uh, the, uh, God has a lot of things for us this next Sunday, and uh, you you don't want to miss it. If you if you can do that, that be that'd be great. Brother uh, Ron and uh, Brother Meeker, if you will come and receive the morning tithes and offerings this morning.
Thank you, brothers. Thank you for your giving this morning. We have a lot to be thankful for. And a lot to celebrate. So we can celebrate Christmas, you know, and before service this morning, Ron was playing, uh, not Ron, brother, Sister Tammy was playing. One of you guys were playing. <laughs> Because you were on the computer, both of you were on the computer, so I don't know who was playing it. They were playing some Christmas songs and old songs that we grew up with, Sheila and I, and uh, some of you. Uh, Elvis Presley was singing one of those songs, Lou Christmas, and then there was another one called uh, uh, I'm Dreaming of a White Christmas. And, and uh, Nat King Cole was singing, and Bing, uh, Bing Crosby, and some of you re remember those. Some of you younger ones won't. But uh, but uh, we're we're thankful for the Christmas songs. But we're thankful for even more than that. It's about salvation. We celebrate salvation and and what Jesus did on the cross. And I'm so glad that he's no longer there. I'm glad we have a, if you can raise this, brother, that'd be great. I'm glad we have a cross. Uh, and the cross is empty. It's empty. Because the Bible says he at, sits at the right hand of the Father in heaven making intercession for us. We're also thankful for our upbringing. <coughs> I'm thankful for uh, parents that encouraged us to be together Christmas time, and not everybody has that. And I remember the special times growing up, but I also remember the times when <coughs> Sheila and I and her mom and dad and, and sister, we just gathered around on Christmas Eve and that was our Christmas. Uh, we celebrate Christmas morning and we celebrate the meal the next you know, Christmas day. But Christmas Eve is when we opened our presents and, and, uh, and I, I can still hear my father-in-law. Uh, I, can, I can actually hear uh, Sister Sheila saying to her daddy, Dad, open the presents and open them. And he would just look at everybody and see what everybody else had first. And then he was slow to open his presents. I guess he just wanted to, to linger a little longer. And, and, uh, but I'm, I'm so thankful also for the Holy Spirit that that moves in our hearts. I, I have a message I want to speak to you about, and I titled this message, I See Jesus. So if you turn with me in your Bibles to Luke, the second chapter. Luke, the second chapter. We're going to start with verse 22. And we'll finish it in verse 35. So when you can, if you'd like to turn there, and then if, when you find it, please stand to your feet as we read and honor God's word this morning. <coughs> Mary just had her baby, Jesus. We know the story that he was born in the stable wrapped in swaddling clothes and lying in a manger. 
it's fitting that he came because he came lowly and next time he comes he's coming as the king of kings and the lord of lords but a few days later eight days later mary had had to have herself purified and in according to the law of mosaic law she had to go to the temple and offer a sacrifice and when the days of her purification, according to the law of Moses, was accomplished, they brought him to Jerusalem to present him to the Lord. As it is written in the law of the Lord, every male that opens the womb shall be called holy to the Lord. Now it's referring to the firstborn child. And to offer a sacrifice according to that which is said of the law of the Lord. And in Mary's and Joseph's case, because they were not wealthy they couldn't bring him a lamb so they brought him a pair of turtle doves or two young pigeons that was according to the mosaic law and behold there was a man in Jerusalem whose name was Simeon and the same man was just and devout waiting for the constellation of Israel in other words he was waiting for the Messiah to come and it was revealed, uh, and the Holy Spirit was upon him, and it was re revealed unto him by the Holy Spirit that he should not see death be before he had seen the Lord's Christ. And he came by the Spirit into the temple. And when the parents brought the child Jesus to do for him after the custom of the law, they took, he took, then took he him up in his arms and blessed God and said Lord now let thy thou thy servant depart in peace according to your word for my eyes have seen your salvation which you have prepared before the face of all people a light to lighten the Gentiles and the glory of your people Israel and Joseph and his mother marveled at those things which were spoken of him. And Simeon blessed them and said unto Mary his mother, Behold, this child is set for the fall and the rising again of many in Israel and for a sign which shall be spoken against. Yes, a sword shall pierce through thy own soul also that the thoughts of many hearts may be revealed. Father, thank you for your word. And Lord, as we get into your word this morning, I pray that we would see Jesus this morning. And that is the whole thought of this message, Lord God, is that this Christmas, we see all kinds of things in our world. We see what's happening in Israel when we pray for the peace of Israel and Jerusalem. And Father, we, we see the presents and we see the, the gifts and we see the, the Christmas caroling and we see the Christmas tree and we see the sleighs and we see the busy, busy, busy of the people going to and fro from all, everywhere. But Father, I pray that this season we might see Jesus. And him only, we give you glory and praise in Jesus' name. Amen. You may be seated. God bless you. I want to talk to you today about a man called Simeon. This is the man that we were talking about. After Marion had her child, Jesus, it was custom, it was the law of Moses that she should go to Jerusalem or go to the temple which was in Jerusalem and dedicate him and it was part of that that as a man, man or a boy child they were to present their firstborn to the Lord and so that's what they did it was Mary's firstborn now it's been controversy over the years and years and years that Mary remained virgin all of her life and people still pray to Mary. I remember growing up and we used to say this prayer, uh, 
Hail Mary, full of grace, the Lord is with thee. Blessed art thou among women, and blessed is the fruit of thy womb, Jesus. Holy Mary, Mother of God, pray for our sins now and at the hour of our death. <laughs> wow. That was a prayer that we said as a young child, because I was not raised in a Pentecostal church that had the word of God. I was raised in another church. But I found out that growing up and when I received Jesus into my heart and he changed me, that the Holy Spirit came into my life and he began to teach me the word of God. And Mary had more children. She had four boys and, and also had daughters after Jesus. So up to the time that she married Joseph, she was a virgin and to the time that she was conceived by the Holy Spirit, she was a virgin. And to the time that she bore Jesus, she was still a virgin. But afterwards, she had four boys. And the Bible names in, in, in St. Matthew's Gospel. And the fact is, she was no longer a person that was a virgin. She was still considered holy to the to the Lord because her devoutness, because of her, her love for God and that because she was pure before him. But Mary, because she gave, a she gave birth to a child, she had to come to the temple because Mary was not without sin. She is not deity. Her body reacted to the fact that she had a child and so for purification, she had to come to the temple, and that temple was in Jerusalem. So after giving birth in, in the little town called Bethlehem, a few days later, they worked their way to Jerusalem where she dedicated her son and gave her son to the Lord. I think that's awesome. We've had many dedications in this church where Parents brought their child, and we held the child in our arms, and we dedicated him to the Lord. There was a man called Simeon who was a priest in the temple. And as he was led by the Holy Spirit, and the Holy Spirit spoke to him and said that you would not die or you would not leave this world without seeing the Christ child, the Lord's Christ. So it was his expectation that any day now he's going to find Christ. He's going to, he's going to look to him, see him face to face. He's going to see Christ with his own eyes. And he looked every day, every time he went to the temple, he expected the Christ child or the Christ the Lord's Christ. He expected that to happen. Just like you and I expect every single day and every single hour, we are expecting Jesus to come back. Amen. Because Jesus said he will come back. And the angels of the Lord spoke to, to the disciples. And, and I don't know how many that were there. And there probably was 70 or more people there when Jesus ascended into heaven. And he said, the same Jesus that you see him go into heaven, he's coming just like he just left. Amen. And so we look for the, the rapture or the catching away of the church. And so he looked every day. One day he was led by the Spirit to go into the temple. And so... At that po po uh, portion of time, he went into the temple. Now, I want to know, I'll let you know that God has a timing. It's not man's timing, it's God's timing. It was up to me, Jesus would have already came years ago. Somebody says, why don't Jesus come when you get saved? He, all of a sudden, he, he just comes and, and you don't have to go through this world. <laughs> that would be nice. But it's, it's not the way it's happened. I've been saved over so many years. 
I can't even count it. Since I was 16. And he hasn't came yet. It would have been nice if he would have came. Matter of fact, when I got filled with the Holy Ghost and he knocked me to, keep to my back on the ground, I tell you what, I, would, I could have, he could have came right then. I was like really happy. He could have came when Sheila and I got married. We were at the altars and, and both of us, you know, and I'm singing a song to her, I, you know. I'm out of key. I know I am. But I'm singing a song to her as our pastor pronounces man and wife. Our pastor's name, Lloyd Crane. And boy, what a preacher he was. We, we heard one of his sermons the other day. Thanks to Casey, he sent us one of his sermons and Man, that just touched my heart. We were just kids. He preached and he'd yell and he'd scream and he and he'd call him the congregation, honey. I remember that. He could have came then, but he didn't. He could have came when we had going through so many difficulties and problems and take us out of here, Lord, but he didn't come then. So Simeon, he's expecting him every day. So he's led by the Spirit. Just so happens, see, God's timing is sometimes you want to do things and God says, no, -uh, not yet. But Lord, I can use that right now. Not yet. He's got a plan for your life. And sometimes we don't see that plan because we don't see the whole picture. God sees the whole picture. He saw you where you're at right now before the foundation of the world. Amen. He knew what you're going through. He knows your heart. And he knows what's going to happen in the next few minutes. And he said, hang on. Hang on. I'll see you through it. I'll see you through it. So he's led by the Spirit into the temple at that same time, that exact same moment. Hallelujah. Let me say this. When God acts, when he acts, it's always right, and it's always precise, and it's right on time. Amen. When man acts, we get things messed up. We blow it. Huh? We, we do. We're human beings. We blow it. And boy, Sheila and I were talking the other day. said, so, oh, if we could have just done this and done that, the things different in our lives, you know, we, if we could have just went back and said, let's don't do that, you, what, what would you do? And I said, oh, I would have changed that. I wouldn't have done it that way. I would have. <clears throat> but God has a, a plan. Yes. Amen. And he knows he knows that he knows that he knows who you are, what you are, what you've been, and where you are, and where you're going. He knows and he's looking out for your good. That's what the word of God says. So as Simeon walks into the temple, here comes this young couple, Joseph and Mary, and their character, the child. And Simeon picks him up in his arms. And he begins to bless God. And he says, now, Lord, you can take me now. You can just let me go now because I have seen the child. I have seen your salvation. Hallelujah. Can I tell you, a lot of people this Christmas don't see Jesus. They see other things. They see pleasures and, and, and material things, but they don't see Jesus. My desire is that I would see Jesus this year. I want to see Jesus. Sheila and I were thinking of a song before service. Open the eyes of my heart, Lord. Open the eyes of my heart. I want to see Jesus. 
I want to see Jesus. Hallelujah. I want to see Jesus. Hallelujah. For my eyes have seen your salvation, he said. Julia Ward Howe wrote the famous song, The Battle Hymn of Republic. And this song that she wrote, even though when she wrote it, America was being torn apart by slavery and everything else, and she wrote this song because she was against slavery and she was against all the things that were happening uh, in the United States of America and in the world. She said, my eyes have seen the glory of the coming of the Lord. If you would read these verses or read this song, you would find out she was not only talking about seeing Jesus now, but she was talking about seeing Jesus when he comes and also seeing Jesus when he comes from the clouds of glory riding a white horse with vengeance and wrath. Hallelujah. My eyes have seen the glory of the coming of the Lord. Hallelujah. And then the verse says, glory, glory, hallelujah. I don't know about you, but when you see Jesus, you can't help but say glory to God. Glory to God. Remember for a moment your, your first encounter with Jesus. Remember when you had your eyes opened from the scale of sin that you had in your life, and you opened your eyes and you saw with a glimpse Jesus. When Jesus came into your heart and changed you. Hallelujah. You became a new creature. Amen. Hallelujah. All things are passed away. Behold, all things become new. Hallelujah. You're not the same. You had a revelation. And without Jesus, you'll not have a revelation. Without the Holy Spirit drawing you to Christ, you'll never see Jesus. But when the Holy Spirit comes into your life and he shows you Jesus through the word of God or through revelation of his spirit upon you, then you see Jesus who he is. He's not a little baby anymore. He's the King of kings and the Lord of lords. He's our healer. He's our provider. He's Alpha and Omega, the beginning and the end. He's the first and the last. He's the Prince of Peace. He's wonderful, mighty God, the Prince of Peace. Hallelujah. He's the Lord and Savior. He's our King and our soon coming. Hallelujah. That's who he is. That's who Jesus, when you get a glimpse of him, he changes your life. You're no longer the filthy rag that you were because we're all sin to come short of the glory of God. And Jesus said, whosoever shall call on the name of the Lord shall be saved. But when you see him, hallelujah, and the Bible says one day we will see him face to face. Amen. Hallelujah. You can't unless you have that revelation. Unless the Holy Spirit changes you. Unless God changes you. You can't have that experience seeing him face to face. Yes, you'll, you'll come before him. Every person will come before him in the white throne judgment. But those people that come before the white throne judgment will be cast in the lake of fire. But those who come to before Jesus will reign and rule with him forever and ever and ever and ever and ever. Because there's something in us, and that's the change that happened when he made us new creatures, new creation. He took the old out and threw it away. From as far as the east as from the west, that sin that that kept us, the sin that got a hold on us, the sin that 
rule us night and day. When he saves you, he throws it away. As far as the east is from the west, as, as deep as the ocean, he throws it away, never to be brought up again. And when he sees you, he sees Jesus in you, changed you. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. And when he comes for you, it's in the twinkling of an eye. Hallelujah. And we'll put on the same glorified body that Jesus had. Thomas said, I'll not, I'll not believe until I see with my own eyes and touch him. His disciples said, oh, we've seen the Lord. He just came into this room. We've seen him. I'll not believe it. And just then, as they gathered together in, in the room, uh -oh. Jesus comes through the locked doors. Hallelujah. He didn't need somebody to open the door. He came in. Hallelujah. His glorified body. Hallelujah. And he said, Thomas, touch my hand. Touch my wound. Blessed are those who have not seen yet believe. Hallelujah. I don't know about you, but I've seen the glory of the Lord when he came into my heart and changed me. This old nature, it wants to pop up sometimes. It does it sometimes in, in anger, in pride. That's when I call on Jesus and I said, Jesus, forgive me. Squash that pride, that old nature, squash it so that I can live for you with the whole heart and holy because Jesus said, be ye holy for I'm holy. And we can't in ourselves, but we can with the Holy Spirit of God. Amen. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. The scripture says, Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Behold what manner of love the Father has bestowed upon us that we should be called the sons of God. Therefore the world knoweth us not because it knew him not. Beloved, we are now the sons of God and it does not yet appear what we shall be. But we know that when we he shall appear, we shall be like him. Why? For we shall see him as he is. Let every man be purified in himself in this. Hallelujah. Glory to God, we shall see Jesus. Hallelujah. He said, my eyes have seen your salvation, which you have prepared before the face of all people. Salvation is not just for the Pentecostals. It's not just for the Baptists or the Methodists. It's not for just one group of people for Israel. But salvation is for all people Amen. from all races, from all countries. Whosoever shall call upon the name of the Lord shall be saved. Amen. By faith we accept him in our hearts. And by faith, we live for him. I know sometimes it doesn't feel like it. Oh, you wake up one morning and you say, I don't feel like a Christian. I don't feel like I need to, I'm holy. I don't feel, I don't feel nothing. That's when faith comes in, rises up. Amen. Let, let your heart rise up and know that because Jesus saved you, redeemed you by the precious blood of the Lamb, you're called the sons and daughters of God. Hallelujah. You're not of this world. You're in it, but you're not of it. Your citizenship is in heaven with the Lord. It's not on this earth as we see it today. One day we will be here on earth again, but it will be a new heaven and a new earth according to Scripture. According to Revelation 21 and 22. Hallelujah. Praise God. But until then, I want to see Jesus. My heart's desire is to see Jesus. 
He's lightened. He's a light to lighten the Gentiles and the glory of your people, Israel. Hallelujah. Simeon blessed them. He couldn't bless Jesus. He said, why couldn't he bless Jesus? Because he wasn't worthy to bless. No man is worthy to bless God. But I want you to know we can praise him. And that word blessed in the Hebrew and in the Greek also turns it around and says praise. We can praise Jesus. God's in the business of blessing people. Some of you have been blessed beyond your capability. <laughs> beyond anything that you've done, God's blessed you. I've been blessed so much. Red, God blessed me so much. I have the most beautiful wife in the world. Her sister's sitting right next to me. I've been blessed with you folks. I've been blessed with salvation. I've been blessed with the Holy Spirit. I've been blessed in able to read and understand the Word of God. I've been blessed. I know that I'm blessed. I, I, I like to say this, I'm blessed beyond repair. <laughs> I'm blessed and highly favored of the Lord. Amen. Not because of what I've done, but because of what he has Amen. done. That's right. Hallelujah. In closing, I've got to tell you. Simeon says to Mary, this child is set for the fall of the rising again of men in Israel and for a sign which shall be spoken against. What he's saying is many in will reject Christ and hate him. There's people in our world today that hate Christ and hate Jesus and hate Israel. Of all the nations in the world, the best friend of, of Israel is America. And yet we have somebody that's in there that, that is wishy-washy. My wife is my best friend in the world. Nothing will come between us. And that's the way it ought to be with America and Israel. Nothing will come between us. We're best friends. But some people are wanting to destroy that. And some people hate Christ. You say, what? Well, Israel's the ones that crucified them. Yes, we know. And one day they will pay. And over the years they have paid. And they're still paying for it. But one day they will look up in the sky and see the one they have crucified, the one that they, they had pierced his side and, and nailed his hands to the cross. They'll look and they'll see him and they'll fall flat on their faces and recognize him and they'll weep and they'll accept him as Lord and Savior for every knee shall bow and every tongue confess that Jesus Christ is Lord hallelujah praise the Lord I'm so glad that I can sing that song my eyes have seen the glory Hallelujah. One day we'll see the glory of the coming of the Lord. Those who are raptured in the church, caught away, we'll see him in the clouds and we'll meet him in the clouds of glory. Hallelujah. Many people in, in America don't even see Jesus. And can I tell you, and they even hate him the other day in the state capital of Iowa, they put up a, a skull of a goat mask. And they called it Satan. They had candles around and they had their, you know, you notice how the devil imitates Christ? Always does. You know, there's there's gonna be a, a trinity in 
in Satanhood, if you will, as, as much as there is a, a trinity in the Godhead, God the Father, God the Son, God the Holy Spirit, well, the enemy, Satan, is going to try to counteract that, and he's going to have Satan, the Antichrist, and the false prophet. Matter of fact, I'm, let me tell you, make this announcement, and I don't, I don't want you to miss it because I'll be, I'll be preaching on it seven sermons, seven messages the Lord had given me, and I'm using a lot of this from the, the book that I've been reading, The Agents of the of Apocalypse by D David Jeremiah. <coughs> but I'll be studying and shown with you, we'll be talking about the rapture of the church is one message. We're gonna be talking about the witnesses, the two witnesses. We're just talking about the 144,000. We're talking about the antichrist and we're talking about the false prophet and we're gonna be talking about the victorious Jesus coming in the clouds of glory with the sword in his hand and the fire in his eyes, bringing the wrath of God and the justice. People say, I want justice, we want justice. Well, it's gonna come with Jesus. So sometime in January when it start that, maybe February, we're getting, I'm getting it prepared now and, and, and studying. I shared this with Sister Sheila, seven messages I don't think you want to miss. It will touch your heart. But people hate Jesus. But you never, you'll never know Jesus until you see him. And when you see him, then you'll know him. People around here, our neighborhoods, your family, your friends will not know Jesus until they see him. And folks, my prayer this Christmas is that we would pray that people would see Jesus. Amen. I want to see Jesus. I want to see Jesus. I want to see Jesus, don't you? We need a, the church needs a new revelation. You say a new one? Yeah. You know, we, we named this church New Vision, and, and somebody come up to me and says, oh, does this church need a new vision? Do you think the church needs a new vision? I said, yes, it does. We need to see Jesus. We need vision. Our eyes have scales of traditions and, and, and ceremonies and everything else that are, is not pleasing to God. What we need is to take off our blinders and put on Jesus Amen. and see Jesus and the church needs a new revelation and that revelation is to see Jesus Amen. hallelujah see the cross Amen. without the shedding of blood there's no remission of sins it's time that the church has begun to preach on Jesus dying on the cross for our sins hallelujah amen amen Let's sing the song, though. Everybody sing with us. It's Open My Eyes, Lord. Open my eyes, Lord. We want to see Jesus to reach out.
to those that are listening. I want to say this to Jesse and Roxanne. We love you. Appreciate you. Yes, we do. Love you guys. So much. We want to say this to Sister Bella and Rick. We love you. I know that you couldn't be here, but we love you. And you'll be listening this afternoon. God bless you. Say this to Bella's sister. Oh, to Naomi and Gilbert. Na- yeah. Na- Naomi and Gilbert. Yeah. Thank you. We love you guys. Thank, Thank you. you. And there's a slew of people we didn't even know was listening. Casey, we love you, brother. Yeah. And others that are listening. Thank you, Jesus. We, we just found out this morning, we're looking on the phone, have 199 followers. So there's 199 other people that are looking at thank this you, Jesus. Thank and you. listening, thank you. and we thank God for them. And we thank Tammy for taking care of it because you and I are not yes. on Facebook. We're not on Facebook, so we and YouTube, so we don't. We right. just Tammy takes care of that. <laughs> you're, you're welcome. Thank you. Thank you. <laughs> she says, <laughs> "Thank you." <laughs> Praise the Lord. But there may be somebody listening this morning. You don't know Jesus, but you're listening because somebody maybe told you about it. This Christmas, will you look to Jesus? The Bible says, look to Jesus. He's the author and the finisher of our faith. Let's look at Jesus this Christmas. And if you, you don't know him and you like to receive him, just ask him, Jesus, forgive me of all my sins. I'm sorry. Come into my heart and change me and make me a new person in you. I receive you, Jesus. I believe in you and I want to see you. In Jesus' wonderful name, amen. God bless you. God bless you. Amen. And bless all of you here this morning. We wish you a Merry Christmas. Okay, let's do it. We wish you a Merry Christmas. We wish you a Merry Christmas. We wish you a Merry Christmas and a Happy New Year. We wish you a Merry Christmas. We wish you a Merry Christmas. We wish you a Merry Christmas.